All right, I think mine says I'm live. You're live. Hey, everybody. <laughs> so Nathan had some technical difficulties. Very sorry about that. I messed up again. But you know what? I've got food, and we have Raven Flower and Madam Luna. <laughs> Noah will be with us shortly. He says he's going to be a tad bit late. But it's all good. It's all good. There's yeah. lots of stuff happening today. Just a lot of stuff. Right? Just lots and lots. I'm going to keep smiling. <laughs> <laughs> so it's really appropriate that we should just go with the flow because, you know, it's we're talking about air in this episode. So we're just, you know, we're just That's chilling. That's excellent. What an excellent segue, host. I love it. <laughs> I, got <laughs> I mean, it's not water, but it's close enough, you know. <laughs> well, there's an airflow. There's an airflow. Right, right. For We're sure, just for sure. You know, candles in the breeze. Mm -hmm. breeze. However, that's mm -hmm. so. Yeah. So we're talking today about the element of air and um, how it affects us in our practice, how we use it, all that nice stuff. Um, so, um, do we want to wait for Noah or do we want to go ahead and get started? You, I guess go ahead and get started. You know what? I think I'm not, oh, wait, there. Can you guys see me? Ah, you can see me now. There, there right. she is. I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> I haven't been able to see you, like, at all during that time. And I was like, well, I can't see Yvonne. She was, like, hidden behind her picture. <laughs> <She's> like, <laughs> I was hiding. <laughs> This girl isn't hiding, and my hair is looking a mess, and I'm still up here. No. <laughs> <laughs> Not a mess at all. <laughs> it Not is. a mess. It is. Oh, hello, everybody out there in YouTube land. YouTube lands somewhere out there. Well, you know me in the notes. I got notes. I'm over here reading stuff, so doing I'm things. Because I didn't. We we lack the nota. <laughs> we like we like your Virgo structure. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, this Virgo totally messed up today because somehow I decided, oh, I'm gonna highlight these little like tidbits, and now I can't read it. Uh, <laughs> so I was like, <laughs> I just, they okay. <laughs> the opposite of highlighting. <laughs> the opposite of highlighting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I mean, I got the co color correspondences and superstitions and um, air oriented crystal plants and animals, uh, tarot and the elements and air element, zodiac air signs, all that groovy business. So if you want me to go ahead and read, I'll get going. <laughs> I'm, down. I'm down with whatever because honestly, air is probably the one element that I am the least connected to i was thinking about that like researching and looking into things preparing for this chat and i was like that's something i hadn't really noticed about myself until looking into this which was ironic because of the recent air situation in my air yeah <laughs> but, it's really funny. but i'm gonna talk about that later i want you to get into the the correspondences and things that's yes absolutely okay well, firstly, I have to say that air to me is connected to all of the other elements, you know, where definitely fire and water are not necessarily connected. You know what I mean? Right, yeah, that, for sure. That air, there is no fire without air. There's oxygen in water, you know. You know what I mean? I feel like it's air. Air is everything. It's the conduit to it all. That's what I think. So you're probably working with a whole lot of air more than you think. Right. Yeah. yeah. I'll say that. Well, little, little okay. sneaky air. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? I said a little sneaky air sneaking in there. Sneaky air. Sneaky Hello. air. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, da -da -da -da. Uh, the element of air corresponds to the eastern part of creation. It symbolizes a vast network of vital breath from the winds that brought the universe into being to the first city, newborn baby, the first breath of life. Um. <laughs> See? Okay. Um, 
where Earth is fixed, air is most definitely a mover. Um, it's also connected to mind, wisdom, spirits, and soul. Mm. See? Food for thought. Food for thought, right? Okay. Or thought for food. I don't know. <laughs> um, <laughs> the element of air is an excellent uh, representation of spiritual faith. Air reminds us, sorry if I can read this, it reminds us that you can't read when you highlight in blue. Um, <laughs> air reminds us that there is much more to this world than what we can see. It also teaches us that we must grow and change um, as the world does likewise. And then there's um, a real, uh, there's the thing from uh, a little uh, snippet or a quote from William Arthur Ward. It says, the pessimist complains about the wind, the optimist expects it to change, and the realist adjusts their sails. Mm, I like it. Mm, I like it too. I like it too. Okay. Color correspondence for air. air I think it, most everybody knows it's yellow, but it can also be white. Um, and apparently the color yellow symbolizes spring. Um, this is this is part of why the reasons the um, the yellow around the oak tree um, the to bring people back. Uh, you know, flowing good vibrations through the air towards your loved one that is you know away which I thought was pretty awesome. I learned something today. Um, da, 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 da. For light healers, yellow brings peace to the auric field. Um, other associations for yellow that can carry over to the air element includes creativity, um, intellect, happiness, clarity, clarity and perception. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Moving on to more notes, because there's lots and lots, but I'm not going to read this for you. Because that would be, we'd be here all night. We'd be here all night. Noah would definitely be joining us by then. <laughs> okay. Um, this I also thought was interesting. The, the Chinese, Greeks, and Romans all listened to the wind and paid attention to what direction it comes from. Perhaps that's why the um, the famous saying, uh, the wind of change. Mm hmm Hmm. That's where that came from. Oh my God, like that. Yeah, this is. Okay. Do you hear garbly goop? What? Hear what? Do you hear garbly goop? You are kind of echoing. A little bit of, yeah, like a little bit of back, back chatter. wonder Damn if it's it. because, hold on. Yeah, I see if I do that too. What did you call it? Gobbledygook? <laughs> gobbledygook? Oh, here's a gobbledygook. <laughs> it's a gobble goblin from here. I'm like, I'm like, please, I have cleansed this house I don't know how many times. Like, I can't. Do you guys hear a goblin or is that just me? <laughs> goblin? Do you hear is goblin? That better? Is that better? That is better. You were reverberating off the walls and I didn't think about, you know. Oh, okay, I'm just like, <laughs> I'm like, the element of air is answering me back. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, everybody, Nathan and technology, it doesn't, uh, yeah. <laughs> but we forgive you because you're so damn cute. So. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the zodiac and air signs. Your signs are Libra, Aries, Gemini. Now, I find this funny because my daughter's not watching. She's downstairs, but she is a Gemini in holy air. <laughs> I'm nurse, and she's an heir, and you can imagine, Arr. yeah, <laughs> that happens a lot <laughs> around here. Okay, um, da -da -da -da. let's see. These three Western Zodiac signs share very strong intellectual aptitude and intense curiosity, which often makes them eternal students in life's classroom, which is pretty awesome. Air signs can be somewhat hard to nail down, just like the wind. Uh, people born under these signs have, a strong, have strong emotions and love to talk or tell stories. Air people have the gift of flexibility, adapting to new trends readily, which is not me. <laughs> not me, not me at all. Um, 
People trust, trust them for having good ideas and inter, interesting perspectives. Highly social creatures, they use each opportunity as a way to gather concepts for processing into the next conscious focus. Um, let's see, what else did I put on here? Doo -doo -doo -doo. Ah, those born with the air element can um, can become so uh, etheric, 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 e t h e r i c, etheric, etheric. etheric. I don't know. Yeah, I'm... sure. Uh, what Nathan? What, yeah, whatever. <laughs> oh yeah, they're ether. conscious. They're yeah. conscious. <laughs> yeah, ether, etheric. I don't know. It isn't. It's, um, but you know, their consciousness can can literally float away, meaning they are not centered or grounded. And it's and and in its this reality, life seems to blow them around. So it's difficult for them to like find their own journey. They get lost a lot, and so they find that they have to really come back. They got to focus. And again, going back to those studies to bring them back onto their path, which I thought was very interesting. Yeah. It makes a lot of sense too, especially for the Gemini and the Air or Aquarius yeah. in my life. Libra, Libra, Aquarius, and Gemini. Do you have one mm -hmm. of those in your house too? <laughs> Not in the house, but I have very close friends and family who are Gemini, and and I'm a Gemini Moon, so mm -hmm. yeah, all my emotional stuff would probably be more tied to the Gemini side. Okay. I feel yeah. like maybe that's why I was saying that I wasn't so connected to air is because I'm an earth sign and I'm very like rooted and grounded and in my head and in my thoughts and on my like straight and narrow and stubborn because <laughs> I'm a Taurus. So the oh, being no, able no. to be like blown around, I'm like, I, I just can't, I can't relate. I can respect it because I'm all about the balance and I think that's necessary. But in my own personal scheme of things, I'm just like that for me, I feel like that would bring about chaos for me in yeah. my life because I, I couldn't, I, I crave the structure and I feel like the, that thing that you said about how they can get like blown around that scares the crap yeah. out of me. The thought yeah. of that makes me anxious. Like I got it's what it It's, terrified it is for me too as well it's like i like my structure i like my schedules um now i'm not saying that i don't like to explore but right, i'm right. An earth, i'm an earth sign as well and i like to be grounded you know and then what is it um uh, and then the scorpio business, uh, <laughs> scorpio business. um but you know that's water you know so it's like uh, those two elements work really well and so sometimes air people not that I don't love them, but they right. annoy the fuck out of me. They well, <laughs> and after you've said crazy. that about them getting blown around, now I look at it completely different because it's so easy. And this, I'm not trying to say the air signs are air heads, but people know the air head terminology and what mm -hmm. that basically means. And mm -hmm. that's what you would kind of want to associate an air sign with. But now after you say that about them getting blown around, I kind of want to be like, if someone tells me they're an air sign, I want to be like, do you want some tiger's eye like some hematite some, like can i can i help yeah. you with because that, that makes that's me a anxious segue. that's a great segue to our next little bit here where it says air oriented crystals plants and animals crystals and stones for those born into the air element it can really be helpful to surround yourself with healing crystals and stones that support clarity lucidity um in, including spiritual visions um, let's see, da, 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 da. the most excellent for improving your tu tuition, safety, and travel, boosting your communication skills, suggestions is blue aventurine, which we don't hear about a whole lot. I mean, we hear about green aventurine, but we don't hear a lot about blue. And then also citrine, which I wish Noah was here because, you know, he's always telling me that's not citrine. I'm like, what, well, what is? <laughs> don't me the real stuff. What you is know. citrine anymore? <laughs> I don't know what it is anymore. Okay, and then uh, labradorite, moonstone, topaz, zircon, and diamonds. Mm -hmm. Moonstone. Mm -hmm. Moonstone, and it's I guess it's to help with the communication skills, oh. um, because the air element people again they're floating around and like they're like oh I know what I'm feeling but they don't communicate it real well to the rest of us and we're like what's happening? Yeah. <laughs> Come on down from your high place.
For sure. I just feel like some of that, like Moonstone and Labrador, I feel like if I was already having issues, like staying down and like grounded, if I get those like dreamy, like help me connect to like other things, crystals, then I'm just going to go completely out of the field. <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't, I don't know if that would work for me. I think that's, <laughs> I think that's really not. cool though. I think that's one of those things that's so neat to look into is because a lot of people are like, oh, whatever, like zodiac science, all that's bull crap. But when you really start to get into like the heart of it and research people's elemental signs and like your moon and rising and all of that, it's really interesting seeing like you can read people down a lot more than they want to give you credit for until you turn it on them and then they're like, oh, maybe it oh. does make a little bit more oh, yeah. sense. <laughs> <laughs> That is so true. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know after uh, researching Josh's rising and all of that, he's a Taurus as well. And he's got a uh, rising, I believe is in Leo. And I'm just like, whoa, no. <laughs> this explains everything. <laughs> it's, I think it's, it's neat. He's Leo. His rising is, yeah. Oh, I said his, that. His, his, <laughs> right? His sun sign, um, it's either, oh gosh, I can't remember now. I kind of want a second. It's either Leo, his rising is either Leo or Aries. Whichever his is, mine is the other. I should probably look that back up. I notated it. But anyway, yeah, he's a, his, uh, his rising is a fire sign. And I'm just like, yeah, that explains so much. So much. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's nice. <laughs> that's, a mess. Mess. that's a mess that's a mess well let's see in our house whoo, well two are moved out we still have one remaining so uh bear and i are both virgos <laughs> <laughs> um and then so we have an aries son and a taurus daughter and a gemini daughter oh my god a lot of fun up in here i bet it is <laughs> Every single one of us is a character, and we're all vying for each other's attention constantly. <laughs> See, I'm a Taurus, and my boyfriend's a Pisces, so we both pretty much just come home, and we're like, do you want to hang out, watch Netflix, eat something, <laughs> chill, stay in the house, like, not, not go out there where it's crazy, but that, well since we're doing segues, I could segue into now the reason why we didn't want to go outside is because of the element air in my area, the quality was yep. compromised recently, which also was another really strange thing that I was like, this is something that can be talked about during this chat because like the element of fire we use regularly for cooking and for warming our homes and for, I mean, for the spark in our vehicles to get places and obviously water, we need water to live and air, the air we breathe. I mean, that's a, that's a constant element. Like you don't have to eat or be warm or be in a vehicle constantly nonstop all day, every day. So you're not having to use fire constantly. The same with water. You can drink so much water and then get yourself through for so many hours without having to drink it again. But mm -hmm. air, that's it's a, constant. you need that kind of constantly. And mm -hmm. when that gets compromised, it's really scary. That's a really cool. scary thing. And I think it's, something that more attention needs to be brought to because it's like obviously we're going to focus on our food you know there's all of these movements and i think they're great about like organic foods and non-gmo foods and paying attention to the pesticides and what goes into what you're eating and your water you know everybody's paying attention to fluoridation of water and what chemicals are being put into your water when it's being treated and that's great we need to pay attention to that but as nathan munchels on french fries <laughs> Oh, good. But <laughs> air quality is something that's being compromised that I don't think people are really paying attention to because it's not really happening when we're awake. Because this whole thing happening with the plant catching on fire, my boyfriend and I were talking and he's like, a lot of these plants are burning these things off at nighttime when everyone's asleep because you can't see it yep. in the darkness. And I'm like, how scary is that? And where all is this happening that people just don't, they don't know because you don't suspect that. And it's, it's something that I definitely think needs more attention. Like, I mean, it's, it's sad. I just, I want to save the whole planet. 
Mm -hmm. I think we all or, do. Uh, I think we all do. It's yeah. crazy. It's so crazy the way things are going. Um, and I think that there's a lot of people that um, I I'm gonna say I my generation. I'm I'm a little older than y'all. Um, was you know fight back. You know stick it to the man. I mean we were very much I think the generation that did that. Um, this generation or you know my kids generation. I don't see that a whole lot. I see it in very few people. And I think that there's a lot of like somehow they were trained that if you speak up, you're being an inconvenience or you know you just don't fight the system you know you just kind of go with the flow but then again now we have a generation of lost entitled people that yeah, which is heartbreaking too because mm -hmm. these lost entitled people are just like being led to do what they're being told to do and the people that are telling them what to do do not care about the environment do not care about air quality they don't care about the coral reef they don't care about the food they don't care about, care about the about animals forest. they don't care about and the pipeline they don't care about <laughs> nothing and it's crazy because people are like, people are so quick to label all of us dirt worshipers. But my question is, what's so bad about that? Because someone needs to be worshiping it because it needs some attention. All of it does. Yes. I mean, it's in a, it's in a bad way. Everything is. And when they, when they have, what the heck were those people called? There were people that came to test the, the EPA came to test the air in my city to see if it was safe to be breathing and we didn't have school <laughs> for a week. Kids didn't go to school what? because they didn't want oh them outside waiting for the school buses because they didn't want them breathing that in. There were lawyers that were giving out free like dust masks to people. There was a limit of five per person, but th because they wanted you to come to them for the class action lawsuit when it got filed, oh, like it my. was crazy for that week and you know that because i mean the smell would seep into your house so i would be asleep and i would get up to the smell and it just smelled like burning plastic i would get up and i would be saging because yeah sage is antibacterial antifungal it'll get rid of pathogens now pathogens aren't what we were dealing with here obviously pathogens are like for viruses and things like that but yeah. my thought process is if i can get certain things out with it. I feel like I can use it to push other things out. And it made me feel so much better every single time. And I was able to like lay back down and not be like, bleh, bleh, bleh. like I, <laughs> it was super strong sage smell, but I personally <laughs> love that. <laughs> I adore it. I don't want to hear you do that ever. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was a special situation. <laughs> Oh God! Well, well you know, if, sage, you, if sage. you think about it, I mean, it's kind of like water too. You're going to have a different, a different density in the in the chemicals of air. You know, in every chemical in the air. So you know, it, even if you think about it from you know a more earth sign standpoint, I mean, your different density for your <laughs> for your uh, your sage is it, you know could could physically literally push that you know that's true density out you know. So, you know, I definitely love, you know, love that you did that. I think that's fascinating and I mean, that's I didn't, smart. <laughs> I didn't know if it was literally because I had to do, I had to do something like, cause incense was like, I, I couldn't stand it honestly. And then also once it was the sage smell because I've used sage to cleanse my property and to cleanse my items so many times. And to me, the smell of sage is that like comfort, that cleansing, that this is, the new start, the encompassing like cocoon of brand newness. So I feel like it just kind of gave me the comfort. It was like, it's okay. Like, you're all right. You'll get through this. I'm like, thank you, Mama Sage. <laughs> it was well, I mean, crazy. Was it Sage like uh, used or back in the day, like they used it during, you know, winter months, you know, when the air was, you know, they couldn't blow the air or the airflow wasn't so great. So they would purify the air with sage. Uh, it kept people from being sick because they had to spend sick so much rooms. time in the, yeah, in the same area. So they would do that. They would do that in the medical wards. Um, sage is a wonderful thing. And there, I know there's a lot of people that are just like, oh my God, please no sage because it smells so pungent, but there's power in the pungent. Absolutely. That's why it works. Mm -hmm. For sure. <laughs> 
Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. why I think Noah is getting ready to come on, which I think is fabulous because I really, I really kind of wish he was on at this point, especially talking about the different um, air qualities and stuff because he's from Los Angeles, right? Well, so am I. But yes. Oh yeah. So well, you know, and aren't they? Or I don't know if they still are. I think they're a lot better now. But weren't they, they like? Are the biggest, now. Yeah, weren't they like the biggest like air quality city? Something yes. like that. But you know what? They have those here in Texas though too. I mean, they do. There's certain um, air, air quality alert days. Yeah. Um, so you know they'll tell you about it now. I, <laughs> in the last <laughs> one, my butt so hard. <laughs> <laughs> Madam Luna's having a day today. I'm like She's triggered. Like, I can't. triggered about the air. Triggered, triggered. I can't. <laughs> triggered, triggered. Oh my gosh. Wait, something I do, you know what? I found that the air that I breathe, I have crappy allergies, and San Antonio is like the worst place for me to live because it was like a <laughs> dust bowl. And so the air does not flow out. So all of these cedar trees and everything else is going poof, poof, poof with all of their stuff. And it just yeah. sort of settles on the city. So you could go out to your car and then like swipe, you know, like on the car and you'll see like the, the sediment, the sediment from the pollen. It's disgusting. Um, but I've noticed that at night, at least if, well, I keep it on all the time. Um, but my um, salt lamp, I've got salt lamps all over my house. And that has made a big difference in my sleeping um, just because the ionized air seems to help. Just me. <laughs> I love salt lamps. They're I want to go to a salt cave. I've seen those pictures of people like laying, looking like the happiest, most relaxed people in these caves of salt. <laughs> and I'm like, well, that's nowhere close to me. And if it was, it wouldn't look like that. <laughs> I'm gonna make one. I'm gonna make one. My my goal is to one day have a shop where people come in and there's gonna be a salt room. It's mm. be cool. with sand and beach chairs. Yes. Salt, salt lamp it up. Mm-hmm. Nice and warm and toasty with mood music. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I'll come. I'll visit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think oh, there he is. Oh. Hey guys, <laughs> how's it going? Hi. Hi. <laughs> we were just talking about you. We oh, were. I know. I, I'm tuned in, and I'm like, it's not working. It's not working. I had to restart my computer and restart my phone. I'm Listen, here now. <laughs> I had all kinds of bad technology issues. It's been awful, but you know, we're here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of glad there was a delay today because I feel like I don't feel as bad if as if it started at 7:30. You know, <laughs> so it's all good. It's all good on my part. How are you guys doing? Good, good. good. We've been having technical problems all day at work too, and I was just like, I immediately went to my computer, and I'm like, when is retro break? When is it? <laughs> <laughs> <Not yet. laughs> but I feel like I'm having... <laughs> what, what I want to know is why it's cold now and not on Sunday <laughs> or Saturday. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> This is absolutely wonderful. <laughs> oh my gosh. I, you know what? That is something I wanted to talk about. I, I wonder if you guys feel the difference in your magics when you're working with air or just if you're not even realizing that you're working with air, you know, the difference between when it's hot, you know, the temperature is hot and then when the temperature is cold. I feel my magic is so much better when it's brisk and cold, you know, like late fall, winter and early spring. And then just kind of go bleh in with the rest of it. Yes. Okay, I'm on. <laughs> <laughs> We're not all listening to the conversation. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, let me see. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> I'm not going to interrupt you too much. I just want to know I'm about to head out. Where are you going? Oh, you look so cute. Look at you. <laughs> it's not as a bug in a rug. <laughs> you look like a snug bug. Did you knit this? No, no. Is it that cold, cold in Texas right now? Where are it's, you going? It's cold. Really? Okay. Yeah, it's raining. Of this person. Uh, okay. I'm sick. I'm gonna, I'm gonna push it that way. <laughs> we got like one week of fall. And that was it. It's over now. It's Christmas time, and that's all there is to it. Yeah. It's snowing over there. Here, no, but it might as well be. It wants to be. <laughs> <That's cute. laughs> 
Like, if you're going to be this cold, I want to see you white Christmas, right? Exactly, yeah. Like, give me something to freeze about because if it's just going to be, like, rainy and cold, what, who wants that? Mm -hmm. Rachel, say bye. 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 <laughs> I'm trying to, like, view. I've got the chat pulled up, but I haven't seen any questions yet. Every time, Rachel. Every time. I don't need to. <laughs> she's got that sensory in her head she's like oh she's on a live chat <laughs> josh has it too <laughs> i know he does he does he's always like <laughs> <laughs> okay well i'm sorry that question did you guys answer it because i was <laughs> over here i was no, playing no, around you're we just chilling all right yeah. Um, I'll say that um, I don't necessarily think that um, my workings work better in one or the other, but I definitely notice a different energy. Like you can definitely tell the different energy and the different uh, magic in the air, if you will. Um, yeah, but I don't think it really makes. Uh, I don't. I don't think my magic work better or worse in either or. Yeah, I agree with you on that. How it's not. I don't get a better or worse, but an absolute difference. Cause I feel like for me personally, if it's hot and like sweaty and sticky out, then like I could use that for like heat or passion or to make something stick to someone versus if it's like cold and crisp and like bitter, then you could use that to your advantage. I really like to use like almost metaphors kind of to make it something to like it's like a personal correspondence kind of thing where you take something and like make it work <laughs> make it work <laughs> make it start. for me i feel like i have more energy when it's cold like i love that and i feel more comfortable so i don't have to worry about like you said being uncomfortable like with the sweatiness stickiness and all that stuff so i do feel much more like you know when, when it's cold in the colder seasons and moving here i don't really have much of that so <laughs> that speaks a lot oh, yeah it would make a difference to where you're at because i'm pretty sure here in here in the country bumpkin hills of west virginia my hot and sticky is <laughs> probably a lot less hot and sticky than y'all's hot and sticky. Uh -huh. i'm pretty sure of that <laughs> and you know i think that the temperatures depending on where you are are completely different anyway because it was getting down to like upper 50s here like a week or two ago and it was freezing it was freezing yeah. i'm sorry today nathan, I, today nathan in san antonio it was 48 degrees uh-huh no nah, y'all can keep that absolutely i love it and i'm like still so where was this on saturday where were you <laughs> i was drenched yeah, we were dying <laughs> would you meet and greet texas week oh my god i am so sorry the people that hugged me i'm <laughs> telling you i know i was like i, don't even know. I have to hug people right now and i am so <laughs> wet but they're like everybody was the same so it was just like you know <laughs> we'll all so sweat we like pigs together <laughs> The witches what, that sweat together stay together. <laughs> yeah, that's what she said. <laughs> and it's funny because it's true because the witches who sweat together stick together and we do worse sticking to each other. <laughs> <laughs> See, to, to me, that kind of that kind of um, energy is stifling. It's stifling to me. And it's not only just because of my physical, you know, um, you know, disabilities or whatnot, but I just feel like I'm I'm muddled, like I'm not as clear i'm not as crisp and it's like when i get that north wind rush it's like woof, you know like I, I can i can do more i can just do more it's yeah. like it's energizing the cold for me is energizing and the heat just zaps my energy and i'm just like netflix yes <laughs> <laughs> And, you know, I think a lot of it has to do with just being comfortable. You know, I think that's the biggest part is just being comfortable because, you know, you operate better, you can concentrate more, you know, you can focus better in the, in the temperature and the air quality that you're most comfortable. Mm -hmm. I can agree with that. Absolutely. So did you guys talk about, I don't know, like, how long you guys have been on. Um, have you guys started talking about, like, how you incorporate air in your practice or we're just talking about, like, air pollution and stuff like that right now? We're talking about all kinds of things. See, we're okay. already on page four, Noah. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm so late. 
<laughs> page four, three hundred and ninety-four. <laughs> don't, don't make him freak out. Don't. No, don't. no. <laughs> he should know me by now. He should don't not worry, though. We we like blacked that. out all of the important parts. <laughs> <laughs> the, no, I didn't know. I did notes, but I highlighted them. Okay, that is pretty big. I feel better now. <laughs> <laughs> what were you? What were you saying? You you did what? Oh, I did notes, but um, I highlighted in blue, and it looked great on the screen, but I can't read it here on paper. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> also, it's highlighting you did like on the computer and then print it out. Yes. Ah. Uh, okay. oh. <laughs> I see yeah. that. I see. Yeah. Oops. Yeah. <laughs> well, now you know. I do. I know. I'm trying to see if there's questions popping up, but I haven't seen any yet. So I guess oh, we'll just wait till the end. I guess at the, like we normally say, if you do have a question for us, please put it in all caps so we can easily see it because I'm the worst at looking at that chat. I'm the worst. Hi, chat. Same. How are you doing? <laughs> yeah, hi, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> we see you. <laughs> we see you. I can give you some superstitions about air. I would love sure. it. Oh, yes. Okay. Um, a wind blowing from the south on New Year's brings prosperity. Mm. Never whistle on a ship. It is thought to taunt the air spirits and bring tempest forced winds. Ooh. Ooh. Southern winds bring rain. And wind sweeping down the chimney predicts cold weather ahead. I never like stayed downwind after having spicy food. I'm kidding. <laughs> 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 Love it. See, what else do we talk? Obviously, the animals that you would expect, uh, most winged creatures that fly under the air elements of dominion, um, usually birds, bat, mm -hmm. butterfly, bee, eagle, hawk, hummingbird, and the owl. Owl. <laughs> <laughs> My sister saved an owl today. Did she? Oh. Uh, my older sister, I guess it was getting, it was a, uh, it's a screech owl and she was on her way to work. And uh, I guess uh, she was being attacked by two birds. I asked her if they were crows, but she didn't specify. But uh, she said, I had to save her. I had to save her. So she picked her up and um, took her to my dad so we could, uh, so he could, well, so we, so he could call um, an old family friend who's a, uh, a wildlife uh, officer. And uh, they're waiting, I guess, until actually it's nine o'clock now. So they should have taken her to the lady that was supposed to uh, pick her up. I guess they were going to meet at some park and give it to her. And hopefully she's okay. But like her eye was like all like junked up and her beard was, her beard, beak was like beat up a little bit. And it was sad. Oh, but I'm I think glad she'll live though. Yeah, I think she'll live though. When you know, because obviously screech owls are just one of those owls that kind of constantly look angry. <laughs> it's like she was showing us pictures, and then she, the poor thing was just like, <laughs> she was so pissed off. But anyway, I digress. It's, it's owl RBF. <laughs> right. <laughs> Pissed off. <laughs> Speaking of owls, really quickly, so um, a couple years ago on Instagram, I posted this or reposted, I should say, this photo of this owl that was like circulating on the internet that was blind. Have you guys ever heard of that blind owl? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And like its eyes look like galaxies, like they look like starry night in their in their eyes. I think I forgot his name. I want to say his name was like Zeus or something like yeah, that. Yeah, I think it was Zeus. Yeah, I, it was beautiful. I gotta get that picture and show it to you guys. So this 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 owl is blind, and when it opens its eyes for you to see, it, it looks like galaxies in his little eyeballs. Oh wow! Yeah. Yeah, it's beautiful. You looked it up. Crazy. <laughs> Isn't he? Gorgeous? Did you look it up? Yeah. <laughs> he's absolutely gorgeous. He's oh beautiful. weird. Yeah. So he's absolutely he's blind. I want to like show it, but it, I doubt it'll freaking work. Nope. Yep. Actually, yeah. Yeah. It comes up pretty good. 
That's cool. You got to talk, though. Ah. Oh. There you go. <laughs> oh, wait. I have to talk and hold it up there? I'm still... Yeah. I'm still new to this whole internet business. Wait a second. Can I like make it look like it's my eyeballs? <laughs> 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 Isn't that awesome though? I'm sorry. <laughs> my what beautiful eyes you have. I know. <laughs> well, I can't see out of them, so. <laughs> We've got a question from Aaron asking us, what's the best time to practice with air? Uh, during a windy day. <laughs> no, and I'm going to say, what time do you not practice with air? <laughs> yeah. That's true. Yeah, I feel like you let me know when I mean, you stop I, I know that there are people that um, <laughs> not really. <laughs> I feel like there are people out there that you know uh, work with the correspondences like certain days, certain times, and stuff yeah. like that. But I feel mm -hmm. like with with uh, the elements in general, you any time is a great time. So yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. I feel like. Uh, a lot of, at least for me, like time sensitive things that I'm doing are usually the things that are like not only a specific time of day, but are like a lengthy thing. So I'll pay attention to what time of day that I'm doing it solely because I'm going to be like feeding it or doing something to it at that time of day over and over until it's done that's really usually the only time i'll pay attention to time of day unless it's like something that i want to be up at like you know midnight or 3 a.m or whatever but normally for the most part i don't really pay too much attention to time personally mm. so do any of you um work with the winds as direct because i know like uh raven when you were reading some of those superstitions uh, you know, there were some mentioned as uh, the uh, like the, the specific directions they come from. So, have any of you worked with the winds in that sense? Like specifically worked with the correspondences that come with the south or the east wind or the west wind, north wind, et cetera? Um. Yeah, I, I get. I mean, yeah, a little. Yes, but I haven't like wrapped my head around it just yet. Gotcha. That makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it makes sense. Um, I haven't done much, honestly, myself, but uh, just as kind of a throw out here, um, if any of you or if anybody watching is into Scott Cunningham, he has two great books, Earth Power and uh, Fire, Water, Earth, Air. Um, <laughs> yeah, those are both very good books, and if you take a look inside of them, uh, and I think there's like a whole, because it's separated by element, right? So it's like earth, air, fire, water, and uh, air. There's a lot of different uh, spell works and like divination, stuff like that, that you can actually practice with the specific um, wind directions. So uh, what brings that up is, you know, timing with air is a little bit difficult, you know, because, I mean, it's there all the time and it doesn't really change with the time because it's air, right? But... Um, directionals like the different directions you can kind of look them up kind of do some research and maybe come up with your own correspondences from the from the different uh you know wind directions and then work around it that way if you're wanting to really focus on a um air practice you know hmm. yeah. is it earth power and then uh and then his other book was fire water earth and air air yep Okay, I'm not. I, I I've seen the covers. I just haven't bought the books because I have them in my wish list right now on Amazon. <laughs> They're fabulous. Um, yeah, I've heard really good things about those books. Oh, thank you. I'll borrow them from me and read them. Um, no, I was reading. I was reading what Snow Orchid says. She says, "I was calling on the winds all day on Sunday for poor Raven. She needed a breeze. I think she meant Saturday though, but I was too. That's pretty funny. Like I was literally yeah, chanting when we were there. Sunday. She's talking to Snow witnessed me like stripped down. So I was in full garb on Sunday. On Sunday. Went back to the fair. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. That's right. That's so right. I was in full Sunday. garb. And at some point, like we had just walked in. We hadn't been there for like maybe an hour. And then I'm just like, screw this. <laughs> I started peeling stuff off. And I'm like, look, this is going to get ugly quick. <laughs> I was like hot flashing. Like I couldn't. You know how, like, I just couldn't stop. It felt like I was being cooked. I was being cooked from the inside. 
you get to a weird. point with heat where you're like, I don't care anymore. I don't care if I look crazy. I don't care. I don't care at all. I get it off of me. <laughs> I'm about to jump at that lake. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I was doing the same thing on Saturday. Like I was literally chanting for some breezes because every time it would stop, it would like the air would stop, and then we keep going, and then it would like come, and you know, nice breeze would come through. It was awesome. Um, that's pretty funny. Earth power <laughs> spell to call the winds. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just, just the wind follows me already. It was funny. Um, <laughs> the, the past weekend, when uh, Tequila came over to visit, we we're sitting around the bonfire, and literally, I was walking from one side to the other, and the smoke, the, the direction of the wind, was following me. <laughs> As I was going, I'm like, what? But I told him, I was like, this is, happens to me all the time. The wind always follows me. <laughs> we always, uh, when we would camp as kids, we would always say, oh, smoke follows beauty and something else <laughs> follows ugliness, but I can't remember the rest of it. Oh, I like that one. Yeah. <laughs> the smoke was following me. <laughs> the smoke was following you all the time. <laughs> Did you guys ever see the movie Chocolat? Anything, anybody, anybody has Johnny no. Depp and Julia Armand in there and whatever. If you like sort of dramas or whatever, she's basically a witch that cooks up chocolate. It's delicious. Anyhow, um, <laughs> anyhow, so she just, it, this is, I want to say this is in like France or whatnot, but she gets the call of the North wind and she knows it's time to move to the next town or whatever and that's nathan when you said that it kind of reminded me of that movie now i have to i hope some if anybody okay good snow only snow thank you snow for being <laughs> my friend and understanding me <laughs> talk a lot yeah <laughs> screenshotting it so i know to look it up and watch it it's a good one it's a good one and, and she's she calls I mean, she has a daughter and they are, they're always on the move, always on the move. And she's done this ever since. And as soon as she hears, feels that, um, that north wind, she knows it's time to move on again. You know what I mean? To kind of continue. I, it's really good. <laughs> I believe you. <laughs> I'm going to look it up, girl. I'm going to look it up. So I just snow. don't feel bad for once because I am not alone in this one. <laughs> right, right. Um, no asked a question that I think is pretty relevant. She said, how do you use music in your practice? And the reason why I think this is really relevant is because music travels through air. So I think that's a good way to practice um, some air magics. Now, um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to toss that over to Noah first because I know Noah uses music a lot in his practice. Absolutely. So, um, well, I mean, to bring it on a little bit further with air magic, I feel that, um, well, for me at least, verbal magic is music, you know, it's, it's part of it. So that's a big part of my practice right now. And I was talking with Raven about this a few weeks ago, um, you know, chanting, using your incantations and stuff like that to project your magic and manifest. So when it comes to magic, uh, when it comes to music and my magic, I use it for all sorts of things. And um, sometimes it just relates to the rhythm of the, of the overall song. Sometimes it relates to the lyrics and things like that, or it just relates to how it makes me feel. So it could be like a totally like, you know, like a, hardcore love song, but it makes me feel like, oh my God, this is really beautiful. So I use that energy, harness it, and then I use it in magic. Fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> so I can go on, but I want to give somebody else a turn. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, and you know, uh, I like what you said with the, you know, using vocals, because, you know, as you were saying that, I was thinking, you know, especially for when I go and I visit the beach and stuff, like after our, um, after the 24 hour live, chat thing you know i thought i really need to um you know come into a good practice especially living on the ocean now if i take anything i definitely need to get into the practice of you know doing more like um uh um uh offerings basically for mm -hmm. for the ocean you know and uh, you know that day i uh tied some hair to a hagstone and threw it out and i also have a uh, prayer that i say every every time i visit the beach um and now you know i find that i, I take a, a page out of uh, joey morris's book so to speak and i sing to the ocean while I'm there, you know? And I definitely think that that's, you know, like you said, vocal magics is a really good way to kind of use the use the air, use your breath, you know? Mm -hmm. um, offer your breath to your, to your deity or to your, you know, your magic. That reminds me of like how they say to talk to your plants and stuff too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's supposed yeah. to 
help them out. Well, mm -hmm. and not only with your voice as being an instrument of air, but a didgeridoo, a tuba, a flute, a clarinet, uh -huh. a saxophone, a trombone, a trumpet, a harmonica, all of these require air or they're not going to create any sound and the sounds that you can make with those things with air is absurd like it's amazing and some instruments can almost put you into like a meditative state just by playing wow. them which i think is a way of working with air in an element in and of itself turn down a little it's down all the way okay <laughs> he turned a fan on he's gonna oh. chill <laughs> no worries. Um, I mean, he's he's incorporating air right now. <laughs> right. Um, no, but we don't um, want to hear that. <laughs> yeah. um, first of all, um, back. because Nathan has uh, hagstones coming out the wazoo, he can actually throw one into the ocean and be okay. <laughs> As if I find one, I'm like, <laughs> my precious. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, like you said about you know giving offerings to the ocean, singing is like my like go to offering for my patron because music is a big, you know, is sacred to him already. So singing to the ocean is beautiful. Just, you know, go out to the ocean and whatever song comes to mind, it can be the Titanic song if you want, you know, <laughs> right. And just sing out there, but I'm serious. No, it does. It's like the, um, the easiest thing we can do. And it's the most meaningful, you know what I mean? Because you just let it, you let it go out. And I can't sing for anything. And I was telling Raven, I was like, if I could sing, you would never get me to shut up. Like really, <laughs> I would never stop, but I can't. So I just like sing to myself. When I'm alone, oh, I yell out and sing, but that's my go-to offering for sure. <laughs> it's that's a good cool. One. That's really cool. Well, and it's really personal. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Raven? Sorry. <laughs> I saw Rachel's headlights in her car, and oh. I'm just like, who's in my yard? I'm just like, <laughs> She's looking distracted. Down. Distracted, yes. Distracted, yes. Um... <laughs> Question. Another way that I think that we use air in our practice is by all of these little mists. This is from oh, yeah. Earthly Alchemy, you know, so like when you're changing, you know, the energy in a, in a space, you know, you're throwing that into the air. I mean, obviously you're incorporating, you know, fluid into the air, but I mean, I feel that, you know, through incenses and um, oils and um, sprays like this, you know, really change the energy, They, you know, they yeah, they just really change the energy. I mean, they can really make a big, yeah. huge difference in, you know, um, in your air quality. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree definitely that. agree. I think that um, we have a diffuser in the living room. I absolutely love it. One thing that Madame Luna reminded me of right now is uh, using your breath, right? She said about talking to the plants. So um, there is one thing that I do that I know that um, that Raven does similarly about um, blowing on things to like bless them. So I remember before, it, huh? even, yeah, before I even started practicing, uh, or but or between my like you know the nine year break whatever, um, I would find myself blowing on on um, on plants and stuff like that just to you know just to do it just so it was a natural thing you know right. So I used to work at this grocery store and anytime somebody would buy flowers, I would blow on them like to bless them before I handed them to them. Sometimes they would catch me and be like, "What the heck?" But you know, I but I, it was just one thing that I always had to do. Something that I always had to do. It was just blow on them before I package them and give them to them, you know. Um, so, yeah, it's a really beautiful thing. Um, that reminded me of that. <laughs> cool. I do that also, when I um, Yeah. Yeah, yeah, she does. She blows on them. And then also, um, later on in my practice, so you know how, like, um, it's really common to use, like, a bay leaf for a wish spell, right? You write it on the bay leaf and you burn it. So um, when I was coming into my practice going into shamanism, um, I found that they would take a leaf off of a tree and they would, um, uh, instead of writing on it, they would just think about it, focus on it, and then blow on it with one full breath out. And then you release it into the air and then you would take one breath in. And I was like, that is really beautiful. So that reminded me of that too. <laughs> I think we talked about it during our water chat, that uh, experiment with when they spoke into like the crystallization or whatever and like when they said mean things it was like jagged and sharp and when they said i love you and sweet things it was beautiful and mm -hmm. even though that was related to water i feel like it's related to air too because that energy is being transferred through the air and mm -hmm. and it's weird it because like and it's our, the conduit to everything 
our breath is moist. So it's like air and water. Like breath is basically emergence of both of those things. And for that to be capable of carrying that energy to something like that, where it can be displayed like that explains something right there. Mm -hmm. You can, that's physical proof. Freaking cool, man. It's cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. No, no, no. And you know, you know, with, with the whole water thing, you know, like, if we could do that to water physically, you know, like an like actual water, we're made up of mostly water. So what does that say to us? You know what I mean? So it's, it's a big influence. It really is. Your words are very powerful. Um, mm -hmm. So Snow is like really on it with the questions today. So she said her next question is, do you connect your social life to the element of air? And it's so funny because I feel like I, I kind of do because I'm, I'm really, I honestly, you guys, you guys wouldn't know this, but I'm actually really quiet in real life. Raven will deny it <laughs> to the death, but I'm actually really quiet. Like I'm angry. I just comes like over. <laughs> so that I can get upset. <laughs> but when I'm around, like at the meeting group, I talked to the people that I knew and the people that I kind of met. It was like really minimal. The rest of the time, I was really quiet. And it's not because I wasn't having fun. It's just I'm normally really, really quiet. So, um, you know, to, t to, to um, tie it in with you know this question, I feel like I do connect with it in my social life because I'm really quiet. So all I'm doing there is breathing. You know what I mean? And as an introvert, I will say this really shortly. As an introvert, you know, I really. Um, uh, think a lot before I speak and that also is time with the elements of air you know with your thought process and stuff like that um, so you really do carefully plan what you're going to say before you say that kind of thing um, and it just makes your words all that more powerful you know right well something I've seen you do know I mean I, I just feel that you're on another level as far as uh, empathically and intellectually you take it all in you know what I mean you're you observe first you know before mm -hmm reacting like your friend Raven um, <laughs> <laughs> just a bit I mean he's he's a very um, I don't know I just I feel you're very grounded you're very grounded and so you just sort of take it all in and then you respond appropriately and you know with that element of air and the thought processes and that connection that you have it's like you I don't, I don't I don't know how to put this in words I hope yeah I hope it's coming across I don't know how to no, put I, it in words, I kind of understand what you mean um one time I, I I back home in California I used to work with this guy who was like a psych major in, in the casino that we used to work at which was pretty funny because everybody there's crazy <laughs> um <laughs> he, he told me similar to what you said you know you kind of like take a step back and like kind of process, but also gauge everybody. And you kind of seem indifferent and at that point. He said indifferent, I kind of like didn't vibe with that fully, but I know what he meant by that, you know? And to kind of like gauge um, people, you know, uh, their intimacy, like when they're talking and see who you're gonna like click with. And you kind of just like make sure and you think about it a lot before you go forward, that kind of thing. So I really do, like you said, you know, so I, I, I know what you're saying. <laughs> yeah. It's 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 really groovy to watch. I mean, it, it is. It's it's um. You can kind of hear the wheels are turning in his head, and then and then then he like goes for it. You know, he's it's just like oh, he connected with that one. You know, so especially at the meet and greet. So it's like watching him, not necessarily decide who he's going to talk to, but he already knows already how the conversation is going to go and who he's going to vibe with. Because I feel he, like people like that are in like the okay how we're all the human collective right i feel like people like that are more not more involved in it but like more in tune with it and not even necessarily to them like i'm not saying they can separate their thoughts and be like this is like a human collective thought this is a thought i share with most of the populace but like in a way of almost like being able to read people like a different level of empathy like a like a character and personality and potential conversation empathy like a completely <laughs> But that's it's really cool though and again it's about that balance because i don't have that i'm like you raven where i'm like i'm gonna see the situation i'm gonna react to the situation i may or may not make a mistake and then i'm gonna clean it up afterwards and be like oh, baby, i'm sorry <laughs> but i mean it is i do i think that's really cool to actually be able to observe it kind of way out all of the potential outcomes and then react and i do think that too is kind of of the mind and i feel like the air element is kind of that of the mind element because i feel like fire earth and water are like lower you know what i mean how the body's broken down into chakras i feel like we could also break it down into elemental areas and i feel like if we were going to give a part of the body an element i feel like air would definitely be the the thoughts and the mind and the the human collective 
It is because it says yeah. it says here on my handy dandy notes. <laughs> it says it's also connected to mind, wisdom, spirits, and soul. And there it that's is. How, yeah, that's how I feel. I see, you know, certain people respond to each other, and I really admire that about Noah. I really admire that about Noah. It's like he gives that quality first where I'm just rushing in, I'm like, hey, <laughs> what am I doing? You know, I'm like, <laughs> now I have to get myself out of this. But you know, but I would mean, <laughs> And you know, it's really funny, Noah, because um, you know how we have had conversations before about, you know, different, um, different characteristics of like totems and spirit animals and stuff. And we've talked about the owl before. And that's one of the teachings mm -hmm. that the owl gives you is how to just kind of chill out. Because if you think about it, owls aren't like most birds. Most birds constantly sing. They have a call when they're mating. You know, they do that constantly. Owls aren't like that. They kind of chill out. You'll hear them every now and then. But more often, owl people, you know, you sit and you listen to what's around you to determine what your decisions are going to be and what kind of actions you're going to take and observe everything. And that also allows the owl you know, to be able to listen to their surroundings for echolocation. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's really important if you, uh, just as a tidbit here, if you're looking into any type of totem animal or work, looking to work and, you know, with any type of um, animal spirit, definitely look into their physical attributes and their, their definite, um, you know, what are, what are they more keen on physically? And owls with it being an, an animal of echolocation, you know, they listen, they, they hear things that other animals can't, and that's how they kind of pick up. That's another reason why they pick up on otherworldly things. And a lot of your owl people are empaths and clairaudient, stuff like that. I just find that fascinating. I love that. I love that. I, I totally wish you were here in our last ritual that we had for Samhain. Um, mm. was incredible. On the other side of my house, so we have a circle going on on one side of the house, and on the other side of the house, um, Bear sort of had a fire, like fire pit and whatever, and he could hear this owl in the tree. This owl has been around, it's, it's a great horned owl, um, oh. huge, huge, and it's been in our neighbor's tree for years, and um, went away, comes back, it comes back every time the weather starts getting cool, and that, that one weekend, it was it was like 30 something degrees it was like 38 39 it was cold and we're like what is going on and sure enough bear starts hearing the hooting and we try to like sneak around to the other side of the house to hear him but it's so amazing you could be sitting in my living room and you can hear him hoot yeah. and yeah. it's just so powerful my it's just little so powerful. my little sister who's um, living in north carolina right now they have this incredible tree line right behind their apartment. And she has a family of, of horned owls up in there oh. somewhere. And you can just hear them hoot back and forth. Oh, the first time I heard it, I was like, oh, my God. Oh, <laughs> I got so excited. It feels like a blessing. It feels like they're hooting a little blessing on you, you know? It just. Right? Yeah. Uh, and it's so beautiful, the sound. Uh, it's so gorgeous. Anyway. I don't think I've ever seen a, an owl. I think I've seen like one owl in my entire life. And it wasn't wild. It was like, you know. I don't know whether or not a zoo is like a somebody's, you know, pet or something like that. But, um, dude, I got so excited. I've seen um, a blue jay for the first time at Raven's house. I've seen a cardinal for the first time at Raven's house. I'm like, what? You've never That's seen awesome. those? What? Oh, okay. I'm a city boy. Like, we don't have those kinds of – we have, like, those little brown wild birds and crows in LA. We don't have that kind of – we have – I was so like tripping out when I seen fireflies here, and I'm like, who's a sparkler? They're like, no, those are fireflies. <laughs> those are lightning bugs. Um, I love it. I love it. Yeah, I'm total like concrete jungle. <laughs> That's cool though. That's cool um, for you to get to experience all this stuff and be like, what? Like, what yeah, is like a little kid, absolutely. Like seeing the world for the first time. Right. <laughs> um, so uh, Miss Erin Williams has a question. She says, uh, uh, "Who are some deities of air?" Because earlier she asked for fire, but she's aiming for air. So, mm -hmm. um, do you guys know of any deities that uh, correspond with solely air? I do. I have deities on this thing, but I can't pronounce them. Oh. <laughs> I don't can't pronounce them. Um, okay. I can tell you that Mercury is one of them. Is the gods okay. and goddesses to include uh, air? Um, include, let's see, Boreas, Aeronaut, Cardia, Mercury. Tan, Roar, Thoth, and Urania? I've never heard of these gods. 
Thoth um, is, is Egyptian, right? I think there. so. Yeah. Um, the first the first deity that I think of when I think of air is it, I, it's Herms, right? With the with the winged. Oh yeah, I think so. Hermes with, with the who? wings on his heels. Yeah. Oh, Hermes. Yeah. Yeah, Herms, Hermes. That. Potato, <laughs> potato. Okay. Not Greek. <laughs> the messenger god, right? So. Yeah. Um, so and it's funny that you say that because that is one of the things that I work with in my practice for air is using the air to carry along my messages, you know, prayers, affirmations, things like that. It's really easy to do. Um, for me, for deities, I don't know if any deities, I've never worked with deities just for air, um, but I have worked with the elementals. Remember we had that chat earlier this year, me and you, Nathan, on my heart to heart, it was, um, we're talking about like elementals and things like that. So for me, actually, no, we're talking about ancestors but we we you know we went there <laughs> we went there anyway so kind of both topics <laughs> and, and yeah in regards to elementals so sylphs would be like fairies you know things like that elementals for air they're always around you because the air is always around you all you have to do is build that connection with them become open to them and they're going to be there so a lot of people work with the fey fairy magic and stuff like that but sylphs are beautiful creatures to work with after a time of working with them, I was able to actually see them. You know, it was really, really amazing. And meditations, um, even doing something as simple as a breathing meditation, just focusing on your breathing solely, you start to like hear different things. And that's another thing, you know, just when you hear like a, um, when you hear, when you feel like a nice breeze coming through, like windy day, turn your ear to the side that the wind's gonna like go into it and just like let yourself go, like just close your eyes and just listen because you're gonna get a message from that air. And it's so funny because every time I do that, I hear at least one word out of it and it's so awesome. Ooh, mm -hmm. I'm gonna try that tomorrow. <laughs> My luck would be like, ow, <laughs> so angry. <laughs> 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 oh my gosh that reminds me okay well like so at the <laughs> at the meet and greet so snow like at least two or three times was saying i don't know if i could be vegan and every time a leaf <laughs> helped her <then>. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was so funny <laughs> i literally like we'll look back and see if somebody threw it at her but no like the, the trees from above <laughs> It was just like, like, they were like, they were like, don't even think about it. <laughs> it was so funny. Carried by air. <laughs> Little snow's head. <laughs> <laughs> I, picture, I picture her face being like the cat where, where the, you know, the, the girl's like singing and she puts the hat on top of the cat or whatever. And the cat's just like. <laughs> <laughs> His eyes get real big and cross. Like, yeah. I don't think I could be big. Yeah. Well, the first one was like, <laughs> <laughs> what the heck? That was awesome. That was funny. <laughs> so, sounds like you guys had fun. We did. We did. If it wasn't so flipping hot, I mean, <laughs> it would have been a little bit. You wouldn't have been you know, so much. Uh, we didn't melt so much, but it was just really cool to see everybody. It was just really cool to see new people. You know, it's great to, you know, see the people that we already, you know, got to meet last year, um, you know, or, or friends that, you know, we see all the time. But, you know, to meet some of the new people was really nift. You know, um, I think it takes a lot for people to, you know, get out of their um, comfort zone. You know, it's, I, I, I was telling Noah, I said, I feel that bravery should be awarded, you know, um, it's not easy for us, especially us impacts. It's not easy for us solitary practitioners, you know, to come to these kind of things because you don't know. And right. I've been in I some groups and or, you know, taken some classes where you, you get those people that are real high and mighty and high yeah. priestess and all this other stuff. Or, like, just, or just, I know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I really had a good time meeting everybody. There was a lot of people there that I didn't know, and getting myself to come out of that comfort zone. Like Raven was like, you know, like you know, go talk to somebody, go talk to somebody. So I would, you know, okay, let you know. I just needed that little push from Mama. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, it's saying a lot. Like just like you said, Yvonne, it's saying a lot. I mean, a, a lot of us on YouTube. 90% of us, I think, on YouTube that are on YouTube um, practicing witchcraft 
you know, and, and creating our vlogs and our videos about it, we are solitary. You know, there's a reason why we have time and why we um, are mostly online. There's a reason for that. And there's a reason why a lot of us are solitary. And a lot of that is because of either, you know, be it bad experiences or whatever. And I think it is great. You know, um, Finn, who's, um, who has a channel with his sister, uh, Brittany, um, Sable and Blonde, I met them. They actually vacation um, here in the town that I live in, in Florida. They vacation, I guess, every year, or at least they did, and they're trying to pick the tradition back up. So I was mm -hmm. lucky enough to be able to meet them and hang out with them while they were down here, and it was like the greatest experience because the only other people that I've really tangibly practiced with were back in my hometown years yeah. ago, you know? Yeah. So it was really cool being able to, like, hang out with somebody and not even do like this huge ritual or anything dramatic like that, but just kind of sit tangibly in person and chat with. It was awesome. Right. You know? Just to have tea with another like-minded individual. I feel that there's magic in that, in the conversation, in the time spent, you know, the energy in the same place, you the know, magic there's of the air, you know, as you communicate in person. <laughs> See, we can tie this into the subject you guys. Yeah, we can say that. <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness. Well. <laughs> I'm trying to see if there's any other questions as well. My phone died, so I'm gonna have to re rely on y'all to <laughs> <laughs> mine was dying and I had to put it on its like little chargery thing, so that's why you're closer to my face. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like at eight percent, so I should probably like be mindful. And I don't know where my charger is. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're already at nine fifteen, so I mean we're over our hour. If there aren't any more questions, we can uh, vom vomitos. It's up to you guys. Does anybody else have any questions? Any final questions? Any 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 comments? Questions? Concerns? I'm Speak now or forever hold your air. <laughs> <laughs> How many viewers do we have? We still have 15 viewers. 50? 15. <laughs> 15. <laughs> <laughs> you go, Noah, with that chat input. <laughs> I have my computer here. Oh, I'm all, I always come prepared because my phone dies so quickly when I'm live streaming, so I have to have it plugged in at all times. Otherwise, like halfway yeah. through, it'll just shut off. <laughs> See, I made the wrong decision. I have my phone plugged in, which is just what I'm viewing the chat on. <laughs> I have my computer, which I should have plugged in. Well, I've, got the, I've got that new charger thing that my husband got it's, got it's this deal you know where you gotta stick it on the deal Ooh. <laughs> i'm over here yeah. trying to like hello <laughs> <laughs> i like it <laughs> i love it so how are some simple ways that you guys use um air and spell work besides incense well you know i've mentioned before burning paper you know, and that's honestly, that's like my go-to thing. Like, it's both fire and it's air. And, you know, I've always thought that, you know, like we've discussed before, the smoke carries up messages. So I think you touched up on that earlier, Noah. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, you know, a main, a main thing. And also, you know, as we were talking about music earlier, I think I forgot to mention, um, I usually play music when I smudge. Because I also think that, you know, sound waves, it vibrates the air and it vibrates everything. And that also kind of helps you kind of either cleanse or pull nice things in if you want to do it. Well, let's get some energy in there. So, um, and so I did this video on in the Thirty Days of Magic series about um, like elemental magics. So, touching on air magics, uh, one really easy one was to. Uh, use any type of wind chime, right? So it could be one that you buy at the store, one that you make yourself. And so when you're making it or buying it, you can imbue it with your energy and attention, right? And so mainly they're used for protection. And so this is an object that you never have to charge ever again because every time the wind blows past it, it charges it. And Ooh. so um, 
Yeah, so, and, and then that sound that it makes is protecting the house or cleansing the house, whatever you set your attention for for that object. Um, on a really windy day, I love to take things out to cleanse them, especially my crystals. If I'm, you know, um, if I'm not able to, <laughs> everyone's like super, super close like that. <laughs> uh, just listening. Um, so I'll take some crystals outside and put them on the grass on a really windy day, but also use that to cleanse myself. I feel like it's gonna, all that wind is gonna pass through me, you know, and it just takes all that gunk with it, you know. It's so simple to brush it off on your own, but when you use that natural like air and you're just like doing it for you, just let it go, you know what I mean? I love it. So air for me is like really banishing, but also really cleansing. I feel like in spell work too, where mm -hmm. like how you can take your herbs or your crystals and you can hold them and you can, you know, put your energy into them. I feel like you could speak your energy mm -hmm. into them. Or I feel like actually something that I am a fan of doing is you take your items. Okay. You write what you're going to write, you know, you put in it, what you're going to put in it, whatever. And then you speak your spell into it and then you close it seal it and then you just get a little shake you know to keep, keep, it. It, keep things I going really but the the speaking into witty it, shake think, and bake yeah <laughs> <laughs> a little bit different <laughs> but it, i do i think it's i think it's really cool how you can take that element and put your personal spin on it and make it truly like your own and you can almost use your breath and air as an ingredient in your spell work. I, I do that with all of my bottles. Um, you know, uh, when you're cleansing out your bottle, you know, before you put your oils or whatnot in there, you know, I usually blow into them. Um, I do like when I'm planting, you know, and I have my seeds, I usually hold them in my hand and I do speak into them or, you know, blow into them um, before I plant them. Let's see, what else do I do? Um, and then also something very similar to what Noah was saying is that um, as a cleansing ritual, when it is a very, you know, windy day, you just sort of like let it blow over you and let it, you know, all that nastiness sort of blow away, you know, like that film blow off. Similar to like, like taking a um, like a cleansing bath, but doing it the same way with air. Hmm. You don't have to be naked though. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know what that reminds me of right now too is using a fan. You know, because they at the main group they're looking all over for fans to fan themselves with. Using an actual fan, and you can even just make one out of paper. Just you know, fold it. You know, I guess I don't know how to do it. I'm um, using it as a tool to use air as an extension of your own energy. So like when you're fanning, you're, you're creating that wind, right? And so you're using it as an extension to cast out or manifest. Um, this witch, I can't take credit for this idea, this witch, um, what's his name? I have, I have him, I've subscribed to him, but he hasn't made a video for a long time, but he used fans, so he would do that. He would, when he would um, you know, make wind, he would use it to project out his energy in that way. So the wind that he would make would take it on, direct it that way, you know what I mean, that kind of thing. So it's a really good way to practice magic, but also use it as a charging tool, you know? So like, let's say you're charging a candle uh, for banishing. So you would take a fan and charge it with your, the own one that you're creating. That's a really awesome idea, actually. Yeah, I like Love that. It. Yeah. So there was a really good and also kind of really tough question, at least it would be for me. Um, duality Witch, I believe is what that is. Uh, they ask, can you use the elements in shadow work and how would you use air in shadow work? So the reason why I like this question is because when I first started out and when I was, because actually I should say when I first started practicing, I had no idea what shadow work was. And that was kind of a term, honestly, that wasn't in a lot of the books that I was reading and that I cleaned up from you know, other witches around me. And I remember being frustrated because I would look everywhere and I'd be like, what is that? Work? What is it? How do you do it? What do you do? Like, what, what do you do? And you just kind of realize like, that work is really... you're supposed to be doing, right? Yeah. You're just like, am right. I doing it wrong? <laughs> right. Exactly. Exactly. And it, like, it, you got to kind of take a step back and realize that no shadow work is really different for everybody and how you kind of process it. And, um, I find it fascinating that they ask about the elements because I think if I were to answer that question, which I'm going, I'm going to answer that question, but if I think about that question, I would say that uh, the most common element that I would use in my shadow work is water because, you know, being a water sign, water is a really uh, emotional element. 
So um, I often will take cleansing baths, and that is a huge part of my shadow work because if I go through something really emotional and shadow work for me can be really emotional, and a lot of my shadow work is just plain on meditation, you know, but if it gets to the point where it is really emotional, I very often will take cleansing, you know, baths, or I will even just, uh, I have a real common practice if I can't, if I won't dedicate myself to a bath, I'll dip my hands or my feet into a small body of water and I'll, you know, kind of do a meditation. I think I mentioned it with the ocean waves, you know, I picture the waves come in, take negativity out, you know, and I'll do the same thing with that small body of water in a bowl or something. But um, that's why I love this question. So I want to know what you guys might think of or what you guys have to add to that with air. Because I don't know what I would do with air. Maybe the same thing with incense and smoke and smudging. For some reason, like the the air and the shadow work and the frame of the question, the immediate place that my mind went, which is kind of in relation to what I said about speaking, you know, whatever. And the, again, this is just me personally, you know, your shadow work is yours and you might not feel drawn to this and that's cool. But me answering this question, I was thinking me when I do shadow work, I feel like I use fire more because I like to write what I'm trying to get rid of and then burn it up and get rid of it. And it I feel out. exactly. <laughs> and I feel like you could use air and correlation with that. Whereas you can write what you're trying to get rid of, burn it and then collect your ashes, say your last feelings, goodbye to you. Good riddance. I ain't going <laughs> to see you no more. Get out of here. Goodbye. Release it into the wind and let the air take it. Let the air take care of that. Mm -hmm. And that that's my, personal opinion I like it I like it and I think um, it's touching up on child work too I think a lot of it is uh, how a witch heals you know mm -hmm, um, sure. it's kind of addressing it's it's addressing emotionally and mentally your shadows honestly because everybody's shadows are different it depends on what your shadow yeah. is Exactly, exactly, and how you deal with that. And sometimes it's not necessarily witching. It's not something that I guess somebody would consider witching mm -hmm. or, or you know, spelling through or magic to get through. Shadow sure. work, I think, is a lot more um, mentally, emotionally more tangible just to kind of help everyone out more of the... Uh, I mean, I'll give, I will give a completely and total personal example of this because I know exactly what you're talking about. For me, mm -hmm. there are some things like you can write it down on a piece of paper, you can burn it, and you can release it into the wind, and it's gone. One of my biggest wow. things that I learned when I did shadow work, I learned that my mother is a toxic being in my life and that I needed to cut that out and that's not something that writing it on a piece of paper and lighting a fire and releasing it into the wind that's not going to do anything because she's still going to be there at thanksgiving and she's still going to be there at christmas that's something that sometimes your shadow work even though you're discovering what you need to work on in a magical sense sometimes the answer isn't always magical sometimes you've got to do some mundane regular old footwork that involves confrontation maybe not even with another person but with yourself sometimes you have to focus inward and see i mean sometimes the person that you needs work in your shadow work is you you yeah. <laughs> and uh -huh. that's, that's hard to accept and that's why it's called shadow work is because uh -huh. it is your shadow and it's different for everyone. Everybody's shadow is different. Everybody's shadow work is going to be different. So what works for me might not work for you. But there are some things that you can definitely just light a fire to it and let it go. And some things that you can't. So, and also, you know, there's different stages to um, shadow work. Like, you know, you may feel really emotionally charged by a song. And you're going to, like, cry through it. Then you've got to write it all down. Then you got to burn it. Then you got to, I mean, there's... So many levels. Absolutely. <laughs> like an like onion. An onion. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So I'll share something about, you know, shadow work and incorporating air. And this is something that I actually do do. So 
Um, and it's kind of similar to what Madame Luna said about, you know, taking it and burning it, right, to release it. So when I get in, uh, deep into shadow work, you know, it, it's really, really personal and it's really uh, challenging for yourself to go that deep inside to bring all those things to the surface to work on them and to let them go and move forward, right? So I don't know if it's because, if it, it might just be me, I don't know if it's just because I'm empathic and very sensitive already, but when I bring those things to the surface, it's like you're feeling it all over again, but that is part of the process yes. for me to release it, right? So this is what I do. So um, if, if you guys are familiar with the Christian religion, the baptism ritual where you, when you go underwater, it's like you're releasing your old life. When you come back, you're taking that first breath into your new life. So I do that in this practice. So when I'm doing the um, shadow work at the end, what I'll do is I'll, I'll either say like a tiny prayer or a chant or incantation. I'll take as much air as I can into myself and then I'll release as much air as I can. So that, that next breath will be like the first fresh of, you know, first fresh breath of air. And I move forward, you know what I mean? So that's, it's like banishing, letting it go. And so the, the thought process is you're releasing it. So you're taking in all that air and you're letting it all out. And that's like just like letting it all out as much as you can. You're letting it, you're, you're, it's gone. You're banishing all of it. Same way that you would burn it, you just let all that. I mean, it's, I literally go to like, I can't exhale anymore. And then the next right. is like, yeah. yeah. You literally so release your demon. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> that's powerful and it works let me tell you <laughs> I, I that, that's it. really I, cool I never considered that but that's actually like when you lay it out and think about it and then take into consideration how much water we're made of and putting yourself into water and not having the breath in you can like it's there's <laughs> throw the thought at it man it's cool <laughs> I like it I can yeah <laughs> um, when I had gotten when I had gotten back into church uh, they're like yeah you need to get baptized and I told them I told the pastors I was like I want to do it and I see, you know, the people that come and get saved first and then they get baptized. I see them doing it, but I want to make sure that I know what I'm doing before Absolutely. I do it. Like that was just me. And so I was like, when I read this Bible cover to cover, I'll do it. And so he's like, well, I mean, that's not how it usually works. You usually do this. And I was like, no, I want to make sure that I know what I'm doing. So I loved the, 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 the thought process behind it, the representation, what it meant. And so mm -hmm. that's what I took into my own practice of the breath. I'm not going to, you know, baptize myself, I'm going to use that breath aspect because that's what it is. You're taking your last breath in your old life as you go under. When you come back, your first, it's like when you're actually being born, you take that first right. breath of air and the baby starts crying. It's the same thing. Mm -hmm. That's really Love cool. Them. Yeah. <laughs> Very nice. He's deep. He's all kinds of deep tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's, and, and you know what's funny is, um, so one of the witches that we met at Mean Gree, um, her boyfriend was asking me these questions like, you know, what did you take from this religion? And I said, well, I always say this to the people that I share with on my channel, you know, um, which is, uh, in a witch's role, we walk in a world that everything has meaning, everything has symbolism, everything has purpose, and witches use those things to make magic happen. And so that's all it is, you know what I mean? So using that, that's how I would use it for shadow work. And it works, it really works. It helps you to release it overall because I'm telling you, it's tough, but it's, it should be done. It should definitely be done. For sure. <laughs> I definitely think, I think that shadow work is something that people also, you know, they do and they don't realize they're doing it. Oh, you know? yeah. Yeah, that's true. Just Absolutely. Contemplating, like, you know, your shadows. Like, even just sitting down and thinking, thinking to yourself, okay, shadow work, my shadows. What are my shadows? And just contemplating that and meditating over that alone is shadow work. You know, it's really simple. There's and been like a change in time. Don't change over to the course of time. I mean, you're going to have to go through this not just once. I mean, I sure. think there's that misconception that people think like, oh, I've done my shadow work and I'm good. Um, <laughs> it depends on what phases you're going on in, in your life. I mean, you may have to do it several different times. Right. Well, and there's right. been like this big self love movement as of like the last couple of years, which I'm I'm digging. I am digging that because that's I think that is one of the answers to a happier world is you got to love yourself before you can love anybody else. And I think that that directly ties in. I think committing to that self love lifestyle is kind of a shadow work in and of itself because that's you being like, hey, I'm going to face my flaws that I have, I'm going to accept them and I'm going to love them regardless. And that is even a form of shadow work. And like you said, there are so many layers. There are the, the outside layers that seem to be the easiest to discover, the easiest to deal with. And then once you start getting closer to that core, it starts getting a little more 
tender, a little more abrasive, bringing them a little mm -hmm. more tears. And but once you start getting, you get to the middle and you figure things out, it's just like that eureka, like aha moment. Mm -hmm. And you're like, and it's not like you're not like so elevated and enlightened after that that you just don't <laughs> need anything else, man. But you do, you do get a sense of like higher awareness where you're like, Oh, and like something clicks. And I feel like with every time that I come back to the shadow, we're going to do something. There's something new that I learn that I can apply to my everyday life that makes human interactions easier, which yeah. is mm -hmm. great. And it ties into that collective mind thing. Okay. So, so I'm going to have to stop here because my battery is reading zero <laughs> percent. <laughs> <laughs> I kid you not. Like I will Oh, there he went. Oh, up. He wasn't kidding. He wasn't kidding. He tried. <laughs> Wait, how do we Wait. end it then? I don't know. So, so we're gonna twenty-four we're gonna hour chat call. round two. Ready <laughs> to go. So we're gonna end the chat. Once we end this chat, then it'll stay like on his channel until he, you know, it, it'll it'll log off after time or he has to go back in and end it. But <laughs> that's how it's gonna work. But man. Oh, uh, I feel bad for him. He just kind of involuntarily left his channel in our hands. <laughs> <laughs> this has happened before. I'm like, what? That, it actually did Meddling happen with him. Fingers. <laughs> <laughs> I think it happened with him. Like we were, um, I, I ended the chat, and then I was like, I don't know how to go back because I don't, I don't know how to work it at that time. I was, like, I don't know how to go back and bring us back in so we can end it properly. And he's like, hmm, this is gonna be interesting. <laughs> We should announce a bunch of contests and all different kinds of <laughs> Yeah. I'll never forgive you. <laughs> so I was watching your, um, you know, just, just really quickly. So I was watching your uh, your new boxing. So you're, you're doing your boxes. And I was looking I at it as I was on the way to work. You ordered one? Oh, my goodness. You're going to beat me to it. So I couldn't see. I was only listening. And I'm so glad that you actually do that on the video. Like, you show everything. And, but you, the way that you do it, like, you, dude, you should work for, like, QVC. Like, and you're going to have this. And this is looking cool, too. <laughs> Allie D-Y, L-U-N-A, L-O-V-E-S. Y-O-U at gmail.com. <laughs> I love it. I and ever you since it. you said something about it now, I'm like, well, I have to I have to do a little, do it like a little ditty. I can't just say it regular now. Because <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> All right. I love how she's so let's go to wrap this up. And she's like, and I have uh -huh. lined the box. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, as you can see in this dark shadowed box that is complete blackness and you can't see anything, just <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Well, I'm all about that it. incense burner. I'm all about the worry, the little worry dolls and the incense burner. They're the really cute. Burner. And when my grandma got me some of those when I was younger and like the tops of their heads look like matchsticks. And when I was yeah. little, I was like, is this a match? It's not. They're not matchsticks. If you try, <laughs> if you try to light them, their heads break off and then you'll be really upset. <laughs> just so we know. <laughs> I just got a message from Nathan. He says, and I'm gone. And I'm gone. <laughs> Oh, we should, we should oh, tell him, like, well, we're still talking. Yeah, we're, we're, we're still going. Um, I think he would have to come back in to end it. Like, he would have to, you know what I mean? Like, because it's on his channel, so he'd have to come back to end it. Um, let me see if he is going to plug in his phone. How he says, gonna... so is it still live? He's like, <laughs> I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's still on. <laughs> oh my gosh, he is so cute. <laughs> this is funny. Um, <laughs> no, but I love it. Yep. Okay, he so said he's on his way. Okay. <laughs> no, but I love, I love the um, the boxing video that you did. So um, I'm like, but I was listening because I was driving to work when I was listening to it, and I was like, oh my god, this is so cool. Oh my god, that sounds so cool. I want to see what it looks like. I can't wait to go back and watch it. <laughs> well, and it's cool because like. <laughs> One of the main reasons why I wanted to start doing these boxes in the first place is because I am addicted to buying these things like the incense and the incense burners and the woven little cool bags and the trinkets and the chimes and all this. I ain't got room for it all. Like I keep buying it and like I get to the point to where I'm like, okay, this is excessive, but I keep finding new cute things and I'm like, I can't just not buy it. Like I can't. So he's alive. There he is. <laughs> 
Woo! That was awesome. I was like, I didn't even know the battery could read zero right after 2%. <laughs> <laughs> and then there, <laughs> right after I was done saying something. So we just committed you to like three events and like four giveaways and two concerts. Yeah, you have your to come up with three hundred and fifty thousand hagstone. <laughs> like some crazy things. Yeah. Yeah. I like how this. I like how I get roped into this one more time for you. <laughs> you Honestly, have season go to the house. I could probably find them. Um, I have. I still have mail to catch up on. I have things that I need to send some people still, and. Uh, like Hagstones is one of them. Like I have a list of people that are <laughs> some Hagstones too. And uh, I find them all the time still, which I was really worried that being in Florida instead of, you know, because normally the beaches I would visit were in North Carolina and I'd find them all the time. And I was really worried like moving down here, excuse me, moving down here that I wouldn't find as many, but I do. They just so. follow you. They just follow you where you go. <laughs> Stone. Ooh, stone. So, uh, so witchy idol season two is a go. <laughs> I'll just let you know. <laughs> oh, yes. Okay. Yeah. Find the judges yet? <laughs> yeah. I was You're looking at it. Well, <laughs> you know, it's funny that you say that because uh, witchy lip sync contest is about to happen again. So season two, oh. and so Ooh. I need all three of y'all as judges if you if you're down. Well, Absolutely. listen, I actually am going to need your help too, Ravenflower, because I'm coming Ooh. up on a thousand subscribers and I want to, ah! I want to do something a little, a little more exciting than just be like, I'm going to pull your name. Cause that's what I've done <laughs> all of my giveaways. Every giveaway I've done, I've written down names, which is fun, but I want to, I want to, want to get a little bit more interesting. So we're going to have to brew up something fun to have them do. Okay. <laughs> yeah. That, I, I get that. And like, with my last giveaway, the people that I was drawing, they wouldn't come forward. I'm like, okay, so I have to do it some other way. Yeah. And then I just said 10,000, so I was like, I need to do something too, but I don't want to do another drawing though. Right, right. <laughs> I had to figure something out. Gosh, congrats, you guys. Congrats. That's <laughs> awesome. Oh, thank you. <laughs> We're just tooting right along. <laughs> yeah, no, it, I was like, because you when I hit when I hit 10,000 um, last week, it like sent me an email that says, congratulations, and I was like, oh, this is like one of those spam emails, you know, right. when I opened it, and it was like, it had like all these little confetti, you know, graphic, whatever. That's cool. You had 10,000 subscribers. I was like, oh my God, like that is so cool. I love it. <laughs> right. That happened really quick. So you just hit, so you hit 10,000. So you basically gained like 5,000 in like three months. Yeah. Wow. And now I'm at 10.2. 10, 10. Yeah, it, it was, um, I don't know. I, I, I was like, wow. You know, for me, like the numbers has never been a thing like, you know, Right. And as far as like valuing myself with the numbers, but on the flip side, I'm like, you know, the numbers do mean something to me because of that means that it's like one more open mind, one more open heart to my culture. One more person is looking into taking this on for themselves and they trust me for that. And I'm like, oh my God, I feel so honored. That's how I look at it. I'm humbled yeah. by it. Cause it's like, Absolutely. it's, it's weird to look at that number and be like that many people actually like want to listen to what I have. <laughs> like, I know. Really? You know what? And as the numbers go up, you, f I feel, I feel more responsible. Yeah. And trying not to be such a dork. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to hit 3,000 and I'm just like, dork, dork, dork. Let the dork them flow. Let it flow. <sighs> I did. Hashtag forever dork on this. Forever dork. <laughs> All right, you guys, I have a pirate from the Caribbean trying to call me, so I'm going to leave you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I'm going to take off, too. I'm going to yeah. get to bed soon and have work tomorrow. We need to so. wrap it up. It's um, funny, the air was our, our topic, and we're all just yabbering. <laughs> this was the best wind down after a long day I've ever had, so thank you, guys. <laughs> for sure, for sure. <laughs> Listen, I'm just hoping that the takes like a turn for like takes a page out of air's book and like just please breezes right along <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready right, for so, Friday. so next shot will be on miss madeline's channel can look forward to that um, yeah and we can all early. laugh as i struggle trying to figure out how to make it happen because i can almost guarantee there's going to be at least a minute of footage that's going to be my face looking real like <laughs> 
No, 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 no. What you need to do is that, okay, we're going to pick a time and 30 minutes prior, you and Noah get on. You call (laughs) him on one thing and he's like, okay, flip the camera around and he'll show you how to do it all. He's done be like, help me, please, help me. (laughs) Help me, please. Noah, I messed this one up because I didn't click um, the whole uh, quick start. You know how you have quick, quick start or you got to click custom and mm. I scheduled it on my phone. So because the <laughs> setting wasn't saved on my phone, it's saved on the laptop. Like I didn't click that. So that's why the links were all messed up again. I was like, well, shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Yeah. When, when, so when we scheduled the next one, Madam Luna, um, just on Facebook, FaceTime me, and then I'll look at the screen and walk you through it. It's, it's really <laughs> simple. But we'll, don't worry, we'll make this happen. I'm really excited to talk about Earth. That's a good one. Yeah, I'm It's down. a really good one. Can't Leave wait. the flower. The flower child's <laughs> got to talk about Earth. I love it. Uh-huh. Yeah, and, yeah I'm, I'm excited to blab for sure. <laughs> yeah, that's going to be a good all one. These earth signs going to be talking about Earth. Yeah, we're uh-huh. ready. <laughs> yeah. Well, all, of us, all of us have at least one Earth sign. Is that right? What? I, uh, I'm a Taurus sun, so I'm that's my Taurus. earth sign. I'm a Virgo. I mean, I'm an earth. Taurus, Taurus, and then Virgo. So yeah, I'm gonna be sitting here like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We know you like rocks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, rocks and dirt, whatever. Yeah, roots. It's gonna be great. <laughs> well, I love you, people. All right, yeah. Well, I love you all, I and I love you, chat. Thank you, Yes, Chad. we love you all. Thank you so yeah, much. Thank you so much, around. everyone, for tuning in. <laughs> yeah, thanks for sticking around and being so awesome and being crazy with us. It was a blast. Bye, guys. Everyone have a good night. See you soon. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Have a good night, everybody. See ya.